Next up on the Cosmic News Network, first contact with Joshua Putt. Good morning, Earthlings. Good. How you doing today? Good. How you doing today? Welcome morning, to First Contact Radio. Welcome to First Contact Radio. To talk about all these things I'm talking about is because in life, everything is energy. Every single thing that's out there. Yo, it's First Contact with Joshua Bowen. He's a man on the mic, just in case you didn't know it. Covering news from all around the globe, from the weather and space to UFOs. We'll talk politics and make you open your eyes. Conspiracy theories and government lies. We'll dig it all up and try to find the proof. Cause it's time to demand the truth. It's time. First Contact it's time. Radio. We it's have time arrived. To First Contact the truth. Radio. It's time. First contact time. radio. We it's have arrived. First contact radio. It's time. First contact radio. It's time to demand First contact radio. We it's have time. arrived. First it's contact time. radio. Good morning, Earthlings. How you doing today? Welcome back to First Contact Radio. Glad you are here today. Today is the sixth of July. Let's look what we're dealing with here. Sixth of July, two thousand and fifteen. We have a sun sign in Cancer and a moon sign in Pisces. Pisces is a water sign. Cancer is a water sign. So today is an emotional time. A lot of emotions around us. A lot of water. So when we deal with emotions, we have to process them accordingly. The different aspects we're looking at, uh, some of them are coming, one of them already passed, which is Neptune into the mix just after midnight 1 30 a.m. but what we are expecting the rest of today is the sun and the moon cancer and pisces are going to be in a trine so nice good positive flow of those emotions and as we move on to today pluto at 9 11 is going to throw some transformation into the mix 1038 conjunction excuse me an opposition between the sun and pluto so those opposite ends, like on the teeter-totter, so you want to see the, uh, you know, these two energies play nicely. And this evening, we have the Wounded Healer is going to get some attention from Pisces. So remember, Pisces right here is the fish swimming opposite directions. We need to be able to focus our attention so that we can be able to get the fish to swim and move in the way that we want them to move, all in the same direction. Okay, Pisces implies faith as well. If we go over and look at the wheel, see everything placed there just as I described. All right, Jewish calendar. Today is the 19th of Tammuz, 19 Tammuz. So if we go look at what that means, it says during the three weeks from the 17th of Tammuz to the 9th of Av, we commemorate the conquest of Jerusalem, the destruction of the Holy Temple, and dispersion of the Jewish people. Weddings and other joyful events are not held during this period. Like mourners, we do not cut our hair. And various pleasurable activities that are limited are proscribed. Okay, and let's look at the daily thought for today. He does not appear greedy nor haughty, but an egoist nonetheless. If there are opinions in the world other than his, then people are disregarding him. If something occurs not to his liking, it is a conspiracy against him. Whatever God does in his world is either his reward or his punishment. All things are given meaning only as they relate to his self. He does not know of a world without him. So we tell him the first step in moving forward is to leave yourself behind. Current moon phase is a waning moon, 75% of the way full, making its way back down to the new moon. Solar wind currently is 479.9 kilometers per second. Planetary K index is quiet. Could get unsettled as high as a 4 over the next 24 to 48 hours. Corona holes have subsided a bit, but we do have one that is moving facing our direction. We'll see if anything happens over the next couple days. M class flare possibility is 15%. X class is at 1%. Geomagnetic storm activity seems to be dropping as well. It was 30 in the next 24 hours, dropping down to 10. The higher latitudes dropping down from 50 to 20. So things are subsiding in the energies of the cosmos around us. And the sky tonight, 
We don't have a particular map for tonight, but this was a couple nights ago. Hope you got a chance to see Venus and Jupiter together. That was pretty cool. Only two degrees apart. But tonight says after nightfall, Altair shines in the south, in the east southeast. It's the second brightest star on the eastern side of the sky, after Vega High to its upper left. Above Altair, by a finger's width at arm's length, is a little orange Terez. And a bit more to the fist width to Altair's lower left is Adelphius the Dolphin leaping forward. And there you go. That's our cosmic weather getting us started for today. UFO News is up next. This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. All right, Dirk. Thank you very much. So let's jump over to our stories today. First story takes us to Woodlawn Lake, San Antonio. New interesting video footage there we go uh, video footage today during the Fourth of July fireworks in Wood Lake Woodlawn Lake in San Antonio, Texas, a picture of dusk and then a video as soon as it got dark. two lights hovering while a plane passes them by okay forty two second video right there is the two. Right there, and there we go. All right, very interesting. Next, we have a mummy. Mummy of an ancient astronaut found by the KGB. The story presented needs a premise. There is little information on the network, and there is only a documentary broadcast exclusively by the U.S. television network Sci-Fi 1998 called The Secret KGB Abduction Files. It is really difficult to find objective evidence that could confirm the veracity of this report. The only authoritative opinion was provided by the same U.S. television at the time of transmission. According to the team of experts ex assessing the film confirmed its authenticity, the U.S. network had issued the film once and no other copy of the video available except those that are available thanks to those who took time to record the broadcast. The film would show a KGB secret Egyptian to Paris as part of ISIS project in which Soviet intelligence discovered the existence of what appears to be an alien mummy. Before the broadcast the film was never shown outside the structures of the KGB secret. It is an is it an elaborate hoax and expensive or or the tomb visitor could be the discovery that will revolutionize the understanding of the beginnings of human civilization. It began with the revelation of Viktor Ivanovich, a neurologist and a Russian astrophysicist hired by the Kremlin as a scientific advisor for the development of advanced propulsion systems. As he tells sci-fi, Ivanovich had access to some secret archives of the KGB in which he spoke to an expedition in 1961 as part of Project ISIS which aimed to discover traces and knowledge of ancient and technology ancient Egypt that could be used for military applications. The military team consists of Egyptologists of the Soviet Academy of Sciences and certain Herman Eliskian, such as the Hermitage Museum, Egyptologists, military experts specialized in chemical and radioactivity, some astronomers including Vladimir Yuri, Sam Sami Sharif, Secretary of Gamal Abdeb, Abel Nasser, the second president of the Republic of Egypt. If we consider the historical period in which the shipment would take place, it's no wonder the political axis between Egypt and the Soviet Union. All right, so there's a lot more to this here. I'm going to leave that for you. I'm moving on to the next story. UFO recorded over Bogata's Cerro Montserrat. This is on the 1st of July. Let's see what we have here. The video was recorded on the evening of Wednesday, July 1st. A luminous object flying high speed can be seen in images swiftly changing directions. The UFO is flying over Cerro Montessori with a beautiful moon in the background. The video was recorded by Jamie Reyes who uploaded the video 
and would like to have the strange object analyzed by UFO experts. And there's our object right there. Okay, moving on. Here we have uh, Taxi Driver Films Mad UFO Through the Sky Over Liverpool, England. Okay. A mysterious flying object was captured on film by a motorist who saw it hovering above Mariner's Wharf. The video was taken by Paul Douglas, who was driving down Upper Parliament Street towards the waterfront when he saw something unusual in the sky on Monday night. Paul, from Ogleberth, said it was about 10.20 and I was driving when I saw something strange in the sky. It was over the marina and it was just a mad object in the sky. It sort of looked like a drone, but it also had three green lights on it. Taxi driver Paul said he pulled over in amazement at what was drifting through the sky and started filming the object as it moved closer t towards land and then back out towards water. It was hovering until the, over the water and, t and I tried to follow in the car it was coming down Parliament Street. As it was hovering, the birds were making a funny noise and going a bit mad. Then after a couple of minutes, it started going out towards the water again. It was pretty high in the sky as it was floating over the water. I went to the waterfront to ask two fishermen if they saw as it moved on, but they didn't. Okay, more to the story. Go ahead and read the link. Firstcontactradio.com is where you can find it. UFO mural marked the 50th anniversary of Warminster thing. All right. So let's see what this one's all about here. There's our picture from 1965. A mural is a piece of artwork applied or painted directly on a ceiling, wall, or other large permanent surface. A distinctive characteristic of a mural painting is the architectural elements of the space harmoniously integrated into the picture. The best illustration for this is the most celebrated UFOs, the Warminster thing. After a strange sound and weird objects, the market town of Warminster had been the talk of the country for many years. The reports of the UFO, also known as the Warminster thing, came from people who saw the object and heard strange sounds in the night sky in 1965. Fifty years after the Warminster thing, an important conference event takes place in the town by a secret artist. The mural was organized by Warminster Information Center, which implies that such utterly unique event is never forgotten. Okay, I'll leave the story for you to continue to read on. Here's a story that says aliens are real and they will look like humans. We're going to look like humans. Is it that the way it is or is it the other way around? We look like them. Evolutionary biologist Simon Conway Morris has shared his belief that aliens are real and that they look just like us, noting how interesting it is that we have yet to find or come in contact with human-like beings given the number of Earth-like planets we've discovered so far. Professor Conway Morris is best known for a study on the Cambrian Explosion, which saw a sudden evolutionary burst of a complex animal life occur around 400 and 542 million years ago. Morris, a man of both religion and science, has also been challenging popular scientific theories with an open mind for quite some time. He feels that many theories, when pulled together, can help explain how we all got here, but on their own they paint only an incomplete picture. Given his history, it's not much of a surprise that Morris also delves into the E.T. realm. He feels that because many planets that we have discovered are similar to our own, harboring the distinct possibility for life, it is likely that life has already emerged. Morris has stated, I would argue that in any habitable zone that doesn't boil or freeze, intelligent life is going to emerge because intelligence is convergent. One can say with reasonable confidence that the likelihood of something analogous to human evolving is really pretty high. And given the number of potential planets that we now have, good reason to think exist, even if the dice only comes up the right way every one in a hundred throws, this still leads us to a very large number of intelligences scattered around that are likely to be similar to us. Okay. Did the Founding Fathers of the United States believe in extraterrestrials? On this 4th of July, when the smoke from the last of the great fireworks drifts away, you can once again see the starry sky above. It may be worth reflecting on the fact that American founders were pretty sure that those stars were home to an immense population of space aliens. 
Benjamin Franklin maintained that every star is a sun and every sun nourishes a chorus of worlds just like ours. Ethan Allen, the self-taught leader of the Green Mountain Boys, insisted that the inhabitants of these other Earths include intelligent beings just like us. David Rittenhouse, the famous Philadelphia inventor and astronomer who made it official in 1775 lecture that was reprinted for the benefit of the Second Continental Congress, the doctrine of the plurality of worlds, he said, is inseparable from the principles of astronomy. Space aliens of the American Revolution, to be clear, weren't little green or three-eyed, and they definitely weren't flying saucer menace to the American way of life. They were just our brothers and sisters in contemplation of nature's endless bounty. They were just as good as us, maybe a little better. As Rittenhouse explained, if extraterrestrials were unfortunate enough to visit Earth, they might find themselves enslaved in America merely because their bodies made the be disposed to reflect or absorb the rays of light in a different way from ours. If these peace-loving aliens were a threat to anything, it was to theology. John Adams put his finger on the problem as a young man in a diary entry from 1756. Given the near certainty of alien life, he reasoned, evangelical Christians must either condemn our extraterrestrial brothers to everlasting perdition or to suppose that Jesus shows up on an endless number of planets in ever-changing alien incarnations. Thomas Paine later made the same point in print rather more causally. The person who irreverently called the Son of God and sometimes God himself would have nothing else to do than to travel from world to world in an endless succession of death with scarcely a momentary interval of life. Like many of the ideas that mattered in the American Revolution, extraterrestrials got their start in antiquity. The Greek philosopher Epicurus speculated that the universe must be infinite, eternal, and abound in, in worlds just like our own. His real agenda was to undermine the preposterous belief that the universe exists to serve the petty purposes of one noisy species in one particular earth. The Roman poet Lucretius committed Epicurus's comic vision to verse in his ancient bestseller on the nature of things, which then slipped through the Middle Ages in hiding. Aliens came roaring back to life in the 16th century when the in inimitable Gordiano Bruno opened up a credish book and combining it with the Copernican theory dreamed of the unending universe alive with the fertile solar systems. All right, there's a lot more you can see here. The history of our country has a lot more things that we were interested in or things that we are exploring now. All right, first we had white spots on Sirius, now black spots on Pluto, right down there. Several mysterious dark spots on the surface of Pluto have caught the attention of NASA researchers as New Horizon Pro makes its final approach to the dwarf planet. Several spots are eventually evenly spaced along the Pluto's equator, with each having a different diameter of about 300 miles, according to NASA. It's a real puzzle. We don't know what the spots are, and we can't wait to find out. So there you go. And that, well, that's our UFO news for today. Stay tuned. I'll be back. Come into our circle, great spirit. Fill our souls with peace. Send down your love, send down your love.
Continuing on. All right. Uh, the other day I gave like my Fourth of July rant, and uh, I got some nice feedback from some of you on that. And you know, I think what's going on in the world is well, we really need to pay attention. There's a lot going on here in the states. This isn't the same country that we grew up in. We've got a real problem, and many Americans are aware of the problem but many more aren't. Um, I want to show you this article here because this is something that's been dragging on for a long long time and hopefully we'll see the light of day at some point. But this is uh, Sheriff Joe launches into Obama birth certificate again. So we know Sheriff Joe has been looking into the birth certificate issue and I just wanted to remind you this isn't a dead issue at all. In a radio broadcast Sunday, Arizona Sheriff Joe Arpaio affirmed that he is pretty well convinced President Obama's birth certificate, as released by the White House in 2011, is a fraudulent fake document. I've been in law enforcement 55 years, said Arpaio. I think I know a fraudulent fake document. I'm not a computer expert. I rely on my people. I'm pretty well convinced it's a fake document. The famous sheriff was being interviewed for Aaron Klein investigative radio broadcast on New York's AM 970, The Answer, and Philadelphia News Talk, 990 AM. You have the whole interview here if you want to check it out. The importance of this being, and the reason I bring this up is, look, we have a situation in this country that's pretty dire. The administration of this country has pretty much sold out the American people. The Justice Department has been corrupted. We know that Eric Holder and those in the Justice Department weren't and aren't doing America any favors. Um, we know that the alphabet agencies are running wild in America. We, they've created Al-Qaeda, they've created ISIS, they've created all these terrorist problems that we're told about. And then they send young men and women overseas to go fight the problems that they created. It's a backward system and if we really paid attention we would get ourselves out of it. But for a long while for many, many years, the issue of Obama's eligibility has come into question. Sheriff Joe is one of those who has looked into this. His cold case posse has investigated this in very much detail, and they have come to find out that it is, as you just heard Sheriff Joe say, a fraudulent document. This information has been presented to constitutional sheriffs across the country, hopefully before he leaves office, this issue will come to play. Sooner or later it will. But it just goes to show America, we've been shanghai okay? Obama gave an address the other day. He didn't talk or mention God at all. No God bless America coming from Obama. I don't know what it's going to take for Americans to truly understand that they have been betrayed in this country. But we need to take the country back. We need to turn our thoughts and attentions to solving the problem and the first thing is becoming aware that there is a problem all of the folks that voted for Obama you need to step back look at what it is that caused you to choose someone who 
is tearing the country apart, why would you do that? And if you still feel that this is something you want to do, well, don't stop. <laughs> you know, the other day I was going on about uh, all the issues we have in this country, not people not paying attention. And that's a big problem. There's 300 million of us. 307 or 8 million way more than the government. There's zero reason at all why the people of this country should be oppressed in any way. But we are. Because of fear. F-E-A-R. Fear keeps people afraid of doing things because then they're afraid something's going to be taken away from them. But while you're afraid to do something because something's going to be taken away, something is being taken away. Your freedoms over and over and over again. So when we finally stand up to it, but if we don't, we can just keep, you know, erasing our history. I mean, we've now taken away a Confederate flag, which doesn't have anything to do with racism. It had to do with uh, Southern pride, states' rights, and other things. But we've just pulled it away. First, you know, First Amendment rights violated because some people were offended without knowing what it's about. And then to see organizations jump on the bandwagon. I mean, what else are we going to ban? We've got all kind of flags we can ban. We can ban TV shows. We can ban music. Heck, we can go back just to what they did in Germany. We can start burning books. Is that what we should do? Are we going to take those backward steps? We'll start burning books and banning everything until pretty soon we've painted ourselves in a corner and we have no place to go. And all we will be is just a, a, a huddled mass of fear shivering in the corner because we won't know which way to turn because we've painted ourselves in. We won't know what to say because everything we say is offensive to somebody somewhere. We have to stop, folks. Look, First Amendment rights means I can say what I want to say. If it offends you, it's not my intent to offend you. It's my intent to say what I need to say. You, too, also have the right to say what you need to say. And I don't have the right to shut you up, to stop you from saying it any more than you have the right to stop me from saying it. And that's the beauty of the First Amendment, that we can both say what we need to say. Now, First Amendment rights certainly does have some limitations. It doesn't give somebody the right to run into a crowded building and holler fire when there isn't one. Just like it shouldn't be giving the media personalities the right to go out and call, you know, for the threats when there aren't any. That's the same thing. They're using their First Amendment right to terrorize people. How much did you hear the media saying there was a problem? Terrorism was going on. We were going to be attacked over the 4th of July. Nothing happened. They even said beforehand they had no proof that there was anything was going to happen. Zero proof. But yet they put the warning out to warn all of Americans, be afraid. Those who were giving the warnings, they are the real ones to be afraid of. Because they are the ones who are lying to you and will continue to lie to you until you wake up. All of us. And I know many of you are awake. All right, so what do we do? Well, it all boils down to each and every individual on this planet taking what's called personal responsibility. Personal responsibility means being responsible for who you are, what you are, and what you do. And if you can take personal responsibility, then you'll find yourself progressing through life. And you'll do things that will help to make your life better. There's a lot of things out here. Here's one of these. Fasting. Fasting triggers stem cell regeneration of damaged old immune system. Protection for chemotherapy. Immunosuppression indicates effect could be conserved in humans. This is by Suzanne Wu. In the first evidence of a natural intervention triggering stem cell-based regeneration of an organ or system, a study in the June 5 issue of the Cell Stem Cell shows that cycles of prolonged fasting not only protect against immune system damage, a majority, a major side effect of chemotherapy, but also induce immune system regeneration, shifting cells from a dormant state to a state of self-renewal. In both mice and phase 1 human clinical trial involving patients receiving chemotherapy, long periods of not eating significantly lowered white blood cell counts. 
In mice, fasting cells then flip the regenerative switch, changing the signaling pathways for hemopoietic stem cells, which are responsible for the generation of blood in the immune system, the research showed. We cannot predict the prolonged fasting would have such a remarkable effect in promoting stem cell-based regeneration of the hepatopoietic system. All right, I'm going to leave the rest of this article for you to read. But this has certainly been something that has been discovered about fasting in the past. Fasting has been used for a long time. Spiritual practices often uh, ask for periods of fasting. We know many different religions go through their phases of fasting. And fasting is a way of just feeding off of your body. Learning that your body is much more than the physicalness. Your body is just the physical part of who you are. And that when we go into phases of fasting, it's in order to reach into our consciousness a little bit deeper. If we study the uh, Native Americans and the way in which they would do their various vision quests and so on, fasting was often part of these journeys. There's reports of people that have gone fasting for like 30 days at a time. You can find the info out there. People have had cancers disappear, various tumors, people that were blind regain their sight, people that were deaf regain their hearing. It's pretty amazing what can be gained from putting the body through a, a process of cleansing, which is what fasting really is. All right, and it's important that we continue to do things for our body, like the fasting and ways in which we can make ourselves better and stronger. Because the universe around us is changing. Here's a article that says something is affecting the entire solar system. Sun's magnetic field is 230% stronger. Strange things are happening in both outer and inner space. Scientists are discovering that the solar system, the sun, and life itself are mutating in totally unprecedented ways. They are reporting changes that are being recorded in space that have never been seen before. Studies show that the sun and the planets themselves are physically changing at an accelerated pace. Most notably, they are undergoing major changes in their atmospheres. The sun is the center of the solar system and all life that is on the earth came from the sun. If there were no sun, we would not be alive. This is simple scientific fact and so any changes that occur in or on the sun will eventually affect every person alive. We know that the sun's magnetic field has changed in the past 100 years. There's a study by Dr. Mike Lockwood from Rutherford Appleton National Laboratories in California. Dr. Lockwood has been investigating the sun and reports that since 1901, the overall magnetic field in the sun has become stronger by 230%. Earth's moon is growing in atmosphere. Around the moon, there is a 6,000 kilometer deep layer natrium that wasn't there before. Mercury, unexpected polar ice discovered along with surprisingly strong intrinsic magnetic field. Venus, 2,500% increase in the auroral brightness and substantive global atmospheric changes in less than 40 years. Mars, global warming, huge storms, disappearance of polar ice caps. Jupiter, over 200% incre increase in brightness of surrounding plasma clouds. Saturn, major decrease in equatorial jet stream velocities in only 30 years, accompanied by surprising surge of X-rays from the equator. Uranus, big changes in brightness, increased global cloud activity. Neptune, 40% increase in atmospheric brightness. Pluto, 300% increase in atmospheric pressure, even as Pluto recedes further from the sun. And Earth, substantial and obvious worldwide weather. And geophysical changes. Earth axis has changed. On Earth, the overall volcanic activity increased 500% from 1875 to 1975, while the earthquake activity has increased by 400% since 1973. Dr. Dimitrov says that comparing the years 63 to 93, the overall number of natural disasters, hurricanes, typhoons, mudslides, tidal waves, etc., has increased by 410%. So, just good confirmation that the world around us is changing. Everything's changing. So we need to 
be part of this change because we are part of the change and being part of it means we take time out to tune into our bodies tune into what's going on inside of us because if we keep tuning on to what's going on outside in this world that we're living in with all the chaos with all the thieves with all the liars and propagandas we need to find a way to step away from all of that and we go inside we go inside we use the energy we use the inner vision to help us become stronger on the outside and that way we move through these times everything is evolving everything changes it's all energy energy is getting stronger we are getting stronger we just simply need to recognize the changes within us if we don't pay attention we might not recognize anything but if we do pay attention we might see that there's really something cool going on here's an article called the uh, current incoming intergalactic waves of energy predicted in 1953 by Greg Prescott over at in 5d in a 1953 book entitled other tongues other flesh contactee George Hunt Williamson made some pretty astonishing revelations about what is happening currently to our planet regarding the influx of intergalactic waves of energy the following is an excerpt from his book Dr. Schein believes that maybe all of the cosmic radiation bombarding the earth comes from an outside of the solar system however it appears that nearly all cosmic rays come from our own Sun the only rays coming from the outside of our system are possibly those consisting of high energy particles in fact the fact that too many electrons are showering down on us and present theories won't account for them and the fact that certain cosmic rays bombard the earth from outside our own solar system tends to support the idea that our entire solar system is entering a new possibility area of the universe every phase of life will be greatly influenced economics religion education politics science social life medicine eating habits etc virtually everything will change for the better in a lecture given by Williamson in 1954 he stated they say that our entire solar system is moving into new area of the universe and that cosmic ray bombardment will increase at a fast rate recently a very famous American physicist announced to the scientific world that the electron count is speeded up and that the cosmic ray bombardment was increasing at a tremendous rate and that present theories would not account for it in any way he was very alarmed his work did not get into newspapers it did appear in a few scientific journals and was immediately hushed up but if you look at some back issues of science newsletter you will find the facts the space people told us about this even before it was announced the space people said that as we move into this new area of the universe there are going to be some very strange things take place on the physical mental and spiritual planes people's minds are going to change for one thing also there will be tornadoes and earthquakes volcanoes that have never been in recent history will become active and erupt they also told us that the new cosmic ray bombardment all falsity and hoaxes will pass away we'll have we will not have to wonder is this or not true or not we will know this is one of the mental changes that will come about the unprecedented earth changes have been well documented volcanic activity alone has increased 500 percent for example Mount Hakone erupted hasn't erupted in over 800 years dramatic changes have been noted throughout our solar system as well additional notations provided by David Wilcock on Guy MTV and here we have increases as we were just talking about on all of the different areas in the sky all right and I'm gonna leave the rest of the article for you to go back and check out but again more confirmation of the changes that are taking place so we can either get caught up in all of the physical we can get caught up in all of the things that are being told to us by the media we could get caught up in all of the lies that the world and the or the people down here on the planet are telling us or we could tune inside listen and understand what we've been informed about by our space brothers and sisters and take steps accordingly and that's what I'm all about and I'm pretty certain that you are otherwise you probably wouldn't be here listening to the show so I now have a message for us this message comes to us from Archangel Gabriel and Lord Sananda 
There we go. Message from Archangel Gabriel and Lord Sun on Doc. Channeled by Cindy McGonigal, July 2015. Archangel Gabriel. Greetings, dearest Earth souls. The alignment of the sun and the stars and earth is so very magical at this time of the year. Grand celebrations around the earth, a time of great awakening and blessings. Take time each day to congratulate yourself for the contributions you have made to a healthier, happier earth. Smile when you greet each other for such a simple act of kindness brightens your day. As one family of light together acting as one consciousness, your energy can make a significant positive affect in your surroundings. Spreading words and thoughts of encouragement to those you work with will help to raise the vibrations and frequencies around you. Walking in nature, appreciating the beauty that surrounds you, even if it is looking at a flower or leaf can remind you of the wonder that exists for you on a daily basis. By connecting with the energy of gratitude for the unfolding of good in your life, Every footstep you take is an opportunity to bless the earth with love. Archangel Gabriel Message from Lord Sun on Doc. Channeled by Cindy McGonigal Lord Sun on Doc. Greetings sweet souls who are here on earth contributing to the advancement of a unified consciousness. Severe weather patterns indicate continuing climate change around the globe. Instead of buying into the fear of these storms and damage, remember to send love to all who have been affected by these conditions. Open your hearts to have more compassion with others who are experiencing trauma in their lives. Be kind to one another, leave judgment behind, and open yourself to being grateful for what is good in your own lives. Nature is resilient and so can you be in your own lives. If something needs to be dropped from your daily life then do so, and resolve to make better choices, that allow your heart to be happy rather than feeling compromised. Each day begins with an opportunity to express your creativity, that inner spark you came here to share. We of the Ascended Realm are here ready for your request for our help to match your creativity to a passion that only you can express. Your gift to the planet, your legacy that uplifts the lives of others. Spread your wings and fly like eagles in the sky, that can see with great vision all the opportunities around you, just waiting for you to make the move toward your expanded success. Dream big, plan and grasp the life you are meant to live, happy, healthy, loved, supported, abundant and helping others. Lord Sananda Very nice messages, again, all confirmations about the changes that we are all going through. Alright, now we're going to move to the next page in the warrior of the light you like these uh, passages I'm on page 77 this is the PDF you can just follow right along download the PDF and then you have it a warrior of the light accepts his personal legend completely his companions say he has remarkable faith for a moment the warrior feels proud and then immediately feels ashamed of what he has heard because he does not have as much faith as he appears to have at that moment, his angel whispers, You are only an instrument of the light. There is no reason for you to feel proud or feel guilty. There is only reasons to feel happy. And the warrior of the light, aware now that he is but an instrument, feels calm and more secure. So close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And exhale. Take another deep breath. And exhale again. One more deep breath. And exhale. And as you exhale, just feel this calm energy coming over your body and feel yourself relaxing. Let the physical body relax and let your mind become focused. And let us think about the world that we live on and the changes that are affecting this world as we think about today and the emotions of the day knowing that today we have the sun in cancer and the moon in Pisces all water signs around us we understand that the world is affected by emotions and so we step back and we look at this world 
and we send compassion to all of those who are caught up in the emotional swells of life. We send compassion to all of those who are having challenges that they may see clearly what is taking place in their lives. And we send love and positivity all around the world to each and every individual. And let's just imagine everybody having a great day today. Free from all of the worries and concerns. Let's imagine the planet without violence, a peaceful place. Let's just imagine Earth and just send love and more love and more love and just imagine just love changing everything for the better. So let's just let that be enough for today, sending out love. So let our subconscious mind continue on the journey sending out love. And let us bring our conscious mind back to the present moment on the count of three. Three, coming back to the present moment filled with confidence. Two, coming back to the present moment filled with faith. And one, coming back to the present moment happy, healthy, and whole. Happy, healthy, and whole. Take another deep breath. Exhale. And open your eyes. That's it, my friends. That's the show for today. Thank you very much for being here. I will be back tomorrow with more news and information. Till then, be safe today. Just keep uh, doing what you can do to make yourself better. And in the process of making your life better, you'll make those around you lives better as well. Remember, we're all in this together. We're all supposed to help each other out. So let's keep doing that. I love you. Keep loving each other. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace. I'm out of here.